she began to beg the midwives to help her, but they did not know how they could. Suddenly, she came up with an idea. I am okay with one son. Please take the girl to the forest and abandon her for animals to eat. A long time ago, there was a war between the people of Umwalo and Umudede. The Umwalo warriors won the war and their king instructed them to take as many captives as they could gather. Among those captives was a little boy called Anayo. Anayo was traumatized by the war because he watched the warriors slaughter his parents and sisters. The trauma affected him in such a manner that he could not speak a word. So all he did was cry day and night in the slave camp. One day, a popular chief visited the camp and piqued interest in Anayo. The chief was good friends with the king, so he asked if he could take Anayo home, and of course, the king agreed. Anayo was very lucky, because a few days later, the king commanded that the slaves be killed, because he discovered their plot to kill his own people. He thought to himself, if I don't get rid of them if now, get rid of they them will now. definitely kill us all one day. But because of the relationship the king had with the chief, he let the little boy live. So Anayo began living with the chief and his wife Uloma. They were both very kind to him. Whatever they could have given their own child, they gave to Anayo. However, their only worry was his inability to speak. Several months later, the chief brought a speckled goat to the house for the festival celebrations. Anayo and his mother were sitting outside when he arrived, and immediately Anayo set his eyes on the goat, he began to scream what felt like audible words. Ma! Ma! The chief and his wife were shocked. They thanked God profusely because their son had shown signs that he may speak again one day. And indeed, they were not wrong. Because Anayo started speaking more words daily. However, he never spoke of his past and his parents never forced him to because they knew it was a traumatic experience for him. Also, they noticed that several times a day, he would go out to feed the goats. So his mother suggested, Nam, why not buy our son a few goats? Maybe his late father was a goat farmer because he is so interested in taking care of the goats. The man did as his wife suggested and bought a few more goats. He also began to train the boy in the art of goat rearing. As the boy grew up into a man, he became a wealthy goat farmer. In fact, he was also the most eligible bachelor in the village. Every lady wanted a piece of him. But unfortunately for them, he had his eyes set on Chioma. However, Chioma's younger sister, Noma, was unhappy about that. She could not understand why Anayo would choose Chioma over her. As often as she could, she would stand in front of the mirror and begin to praise herself. Lekwadi's beauty, Nwadi sharp, Noma, Hapu, Idi very sharp. Who doesn't want Noma? The most beautiful girl in the village. Even kings and warriors are seeking to marry me. Indeed, she was not lying. Every man in the village wanted Noma except Anayo. Finally, a chance came for her to snatch Anayo from her sister. One night, her mother asked her to go and look for her sister because she was unusually late. Noma checked the farm, but she was not there. 
So she decided to check Anayo's house. When she got there, she met a drunk Anayo lounging under the tree. She called out to him and in his drunken state, he responded saying, Hmm, Choma, my love. She wanted to walk away, but then a thought crossed her mind and she decided to choose to betray her sister that night. Yes, my love, it is me, she responded. She then led Anayo into his hut and let him take her virginity. And just as they were done making love, she heard Chioma calling Anayo. Anayo, where are you? Come out, to. I have to hurry home to my mother. Norma quickly responded without caring about her sister's emotions. She, we are here. Chioma went into Anayo's hut with her lantern. And when she got there, she saw Norma resting on Anayo's body. She quickly ran out of the hut because she could not believe that two people she loved so much had betrayed her like that. Over the next few days, Anayo begged Chioma as often as he could. He told her that he would never intentionally hurt her. But it was too late because Norma was insisting Anayo marry her because he had taken her pride as a woman. Both parents called a meeting and they concluded that it was the best step to take. So it was official. Norma and Anayo would get married. Finally, Norma won. She married the love of her life. And because Anayo was a kind man, he respected her and never maltreated her, although he did not love her. But she did not care. She would always tell her friend Ngozi, When I give him strong babies, he will love me. But she was wrong. During the first year of her marriage, she did not get pregnant. In the second year, there was still no pregnancy, up until the tenth year. She was depressed. She began to think that maybe God was punishing her for what she did to Choma. Anayo, on the other hand, never pressured her. Rather, he tried to suggest that they take one of the orphans from the village and raise as their own. But any time he brought up the suggestion, Norma would cry, accusing him of calling her barren. Well, at the end of the tenth year, Norma finally became pregnant. She could not contain her joy and same went for Anayo. He threw the biggest party the village had seen in a while to celebrate her pregnancy. Nine months later, she delivered twins, a boy and a girl. But there was a problem. The girl's skin was abnormal, according to Norma. When she saw the baby, she screamed. Even the two midwives present at delivery could not explain what they were seeing. She began to cry. How to let down my enemies, oh, they will laugh at me. What kind of skin is this? She began to beg the midwives to help her, but they did not know how they could. Suddenly, she came up with an idea. I am okay with one son. Please take the girl to the forest and abandon her for animals to eat. My husband must not see her. He will hate me more for embarrassing him in this manner. The midwives initially refused. But she offered them a life-changing amount of money and they accepted. The deed was done and Unoma moved on with her life as a mother of a bouncing baby boy the heir to Anayo's fortune. But misfortune soon struck. A few weeks after delivery, when Unoma was sleeping with her baby boy, she mistakenly rolled over and suffocated him to death. When she woke up in the morning, she was inconsolable. Hey, whoa! My enemies are finally caught up with me. 
The next few months were very depressing for her. She made up her mind to go and make amends with her sister who had moved to the neighboring village to avoid seeing Anayo and Noma together. Please, come and marry my husband. He still and has always loved you. I will never be able to make him happy. After Noma's betrayal, Chioma remained unmarried. She could not bring herself to be with another man besides Anayo. He was the love of her life. When she heard Unoma's offer, she turned it down. But Unoma went to Anayo and asked him to come and convince her. He was very glad at the offer, not because he cared about kids, but because he finally had the opportunity to be with his Chioma. Well, she accepted and within a year of their marriage, she got pregnant. And nine months later, she gave birth. But just like her sister, she had a baby with the same type of skin. Although she was confused, she thanked God for the child and then asked the midwife to call her husband to see the baby. Norman and Anayo came into the hut together. But immediately Anayo set his eyes on the child. He knelt to the floor and began weeping. Ma, ma, mommy. That child had the same skin as his mother that was killed in the war. Just like the speckled goat reminded him of his mother's skin, so did this new baby. And for the first time, he spoke about his late mother publicly and her skin condition. The baby's skin condition is what we call piebaldism in this present day, and it is not a life-threatening condition. He danced and thanked God for bringing someone that would remind him of his late mother. Noma could not believe what was happening. She could not believe she lost the opportunity to bring her husband joy. And for a second, it felt like years of depression, hurt, rejection, and pain flooded her memories. Immediately, she let out a loud scream. And when everyone tried to attend to her, they realized that she had lost her mind. Norma was mad. Nobody knew how to cure her, not even the best herbalists in neighboring villages. And just like that, Norma remained mad until she passed away. The moral of this story can be found in the book of Proverbs 14 verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. In simple terms, let us all be careful with the decisions we make. Remember, wrong decisions always lead to disaster, no matter how long it takes.